Check it out, YouTube. We got the Futura 80 millimeter. I'm John at Two Brothers Radio Control, and this jet is super awesome. And we also have, unfortunately, a flock of migrating birds coming back for springtime in NC, so it's gonna be a little loud. I'll do my best to talk over them, though. We do have uh, fully articulating landing gear on this bugger. Check this out. Super sweet. I did replace mine with Dubro, or the mains with Dubro Super Lights, just to get the, rid of the rattling noise on this pavement. We have uh, gapless hinges on the ailerons, on the flaps, and on the rudder, but unfortunately the elevator is a foam hinge, so not a whole lot you can do about that. We are flying this on an SMC 4400 pack. We did fly this yesterday and it was just too blustery to fly. We have a, a, a 5280 burner in the back here. You can see it connected to the balance plug. It's hidden underneath the board to try to clean it up a bit. And we have a GPS system in there too. So we're gonna turn on the GPS display on top of all this stuff so you guys can see what, how fast this jet's going today and all the cool stuff it's capable of. So let's go ahead and cut to where it's gonna go. After some extensive testing on this jet, we did find the best way to fly it is on a 4400 pack so far, shoved about where it's at. This jet will do all sorts of cool maneuvers at that center of gravity, which is right above the main landing wheels. So the main gear, uh, let's go ahead and get her up. I'll try to keep the jet as low to the ground as I can because the uh, not a whole lot of sky, uh, clouds in the sky today. All right, we're gonna actually put it in a safe real quick. I did forget to put it into the GPS mode so you guys could see what's going on. Okay, now we're in GPS. Turning it over, here we go. Now you guys can see how fast it's going. Turn the voice up a bit so you guys can hear her calling out. So we did find out that this jet can do all manner of awesome maneuvers on top of like crazy tumbles and stuff too. Let's take it up and go do a tumble. Which it does much better than it did on the SMC 5300 packs or 55s that we flew it on last time. It was a little too heavy for the airframe, but now it's not. It's actually perfect for it. Put it into a knife edge pass. And it just stays in it. There is a, an experimental full scale plane on the runway. I don't wanna, or not runway, but taxiway. I'm trying to stay away from it while we fly. He knows we're here, he doesn't mind. Look at the knife edge go. How fast have we gone so far? So not really even trying to do speed yet. And honestly, I don't really care much about speed testing, but we're gonna do it because some of you guys do enjoy it. So we're gonna go up vertical. Get some speed. Coming in for a speed pass, dear. You got it. 22.45 volts. How fast was that? 100 flaps up, 106.3 miles per hour. So I did have the flaps out the whole time, like an idiot. So let's uh, do that one more time. We got a couple more batteries for this bugger too, so we're not quite done flying it yet. And we did get some useful footage from yesterday. Flipping it around. How fast? 100, 23, 106.3 miles per hour. So 106, this thing isn't really that much of a speed demon. I've heard some people say they got like 118. I'm not sure if I'm buying that. We have almost no trim on this jet. And you know, it's pretty much as aerodynamically pure as it can be. So 106 sounds reasonable. What I care about is slow flight in almost everything. I wanna see how slow I can get something to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this thing into a high alpha pass. Some of you guys are gonna be like, hey John, you can't high alpha Futura. That's what they said about the Viper 90 too, and look at where we are now. Just barely pulling the elevator back. Little bit of wing rocky, but it's starting to stabilize. Look at it go. And it recovers from it pretty good too. I think we can get a better result turning around. So let's keep the GPS callouts going so you can see how slow or hear how slow it's going. Put it into a stall, here we go. Holding the elevator back just a little bit. All right, did get a high alpha pass, but it is a little unstable. So we're gonna try again later with a um, 3600 pack, see if the reduced wing loading helps. So you guys have seen how fast it can go, at least for us. You've seen how well it handles a knife edge and you know full speed and all that stuff. How does it land? How does it land? Well, I'll tell you that, pretty easy. Look at it go. And that could have been even better if I had bothered to flare. So let's actually bother to flare next time. Get a little bit of speed, turn her around, full flaps coming out. Kicking it around with some rudder, staying away from that experimental plane that gentleman owns. Would rather not put a plane through his fabric wing. Keeping a little bit of throttle on the approach. 
A little bit rougher on the landings than I want. I got some better ones yesterday in wind, believe it or not. Just got to get used to flying this plane again. It's the second time today. We had some B-roll stuff I did with it earlier and some crappy landings I had then too. I think I just got used to flying in wind and then it just became the default. There we go. Oh, the nose gear didn't come all the way out. Oh no. So that's a problem that's happened in the past and I should have checked for that before I touched down because the uh, what ends up happening is the, a spring gets caught on the nose gear. So that is something you guys should watch out for with this jet. Is it flyable? Absolutely. Can I get it right back up? No problem at all. All that happened is the, the nose door scraped up. I may have to order a new one, but I think it held up just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and show you. The door is fine, just a little bit of a scrape on it. So we're gonna go right back up. Not a big deal. I've seen planes take worse impacts from that. Just be careful with that. Do a quick gear pass. That's what I should have done. Otherwise, not a big deal. See, no problems at all. But that is a defect, so keep that in mind. We're gonna keep that in mind with our review as well when I uh, give you guys an update at John score slash two brothers score on this jet. So. I mean, otherwise it flies great. So really, it's not that big of an issue. It's just annoying, right? But look at this thing go. Let's go take it up and do another set of tumbles in the sky. We're gonna go up a little bit higher, dear. Hopefully the camera can keep up with it. Are you in focus? So far, maybe. All right, three, two, one. Pretty sweet tumbling. How good was that? Did that stay in focus? Yeah, it looked good. Cool, yeah, we've had issues with the, the, the Sony camera today. Blue skies and sun being as intense as it is don't really mix all that well. But hey, the birds finally kind of calmed down. So let's go ahead and take her up. Jesus Christ, that came a little close. That's why I don't normally do those tail slides. Yeah, I should have not done that tail slide. We're gonna do it this side instead. We're gonna do what I intended to do, which was not wreck anything. Yeah, it's a very stable airframe though, as you guys can see. Here we go. This is what I was trying to do, was come in and do a dead stick landing. To show you how well this thing lands. Look at it come. Bounced it. Let's not do that again. <laughs> I was in full control at the end. I just kind of stalled it and, you know, over-controlled. Uh, man, I'm, first time I felt anxiety flying in quite a while. So we all make mistakes, right guys? Make sure the gear is out. I got three gear, dear. Looks like it. Looks like it, yep. Good. All right, we're gonna call it quits there. Actually, no, we're not. We're gonna hot swap. We're gonna bring it back back. Because I, I noticed some of you guys were complaining that the you know, the vids aren't as long as they used to be. And you know what? I think you're right. We can get it right back up. I'm gonna taxi over, grab a battery, and just get it back up as fast as I can. And then we're gonna save the 3600 pack that I've got for the B-roll stuff and see if we can get a better high alpha approach. I know we were able to get it on the first pass earlier on the first pack, but I think we can get a better job of it now. So we're gonna try that. Looks like we got a little bit of a scrape here and that's about oh. it. Uh, there's some dirt. We can just wipe all that off. The problem is, oh, it even popped out of the hinge. No, it does not. What's that? It's there. not focusing. All right, it's better. Okay, now we're, you got a good view of it. It's doing fine now. Just has to be cleaned a little bit. I may have to get a new door if it's too dirty or if I can't clean it. I don't want it to look too crappy, you know? It's gotta show off the products in a good light. Uh, however, what I just did earlier with that mistaken tail slide, I was just too high up to do it right. Don't emulate me on that one, please. Uh, we all make mistakes. Even people have been flying a long time. So it's just part of the hobby to screw up. I almost crashed the plane coming out of that tail slide. It's one of the reasons why I don't do tail slides until I'm really high up because sometimes the plane comes out of it in an attitude that I'm not expecting it to. And then you make a mistake and you crash. Uh, thankfully, you know, I'm relatively competent enough that I don't normally crash when unexpected things happen, but it still does happen. And with a full scale plane sitting there on the tarmac, and I, if, I, if I had actually hit it, I would have been in deep dew. And my insurance for my house would have been paying out, so. Very happy that I didn't hit it. Let's put it that way. Anyway, we'll just continue on, continuing on. This thing is a dream to fly. Love it. Actually, what I want to do is get a little further away and set up for a nice long knife edge pass over the runway. 
when we get up to, to the knife edge past here, you're probably gonna wanna zoom out a little bit for this. Here. Just to prepare yourself. All right, let's line up for it. Get straight down. Probably didn't look as cool as it could have because I didn't get it to stay late or low to the ground. I gave it too much rudder. We can do that again on the bit or we can just do it right now. But I wasn't straight off. So let's do it again. Line back up for it. Sorry about the mistakes, guys. I'm a little jittered from the last time I flew just now making mistakes. But you got to get over it and just keep flying. Got to fly the plane all the time. That was better. I just about hit that taxiway light. <laughs> awesome. So let's go ahead and do some more touch and goes with this thing uh, while we're kind of relaxing now. I've gotten my crazy stuff out. Actually, real quick. You can see that it does have some, it has a very strong elevator response at the center of gravity. So if I was to jank the sticks real hard, I can actually force it to stall, even though it, it doesn't really like to stall. It's got a very gentle wing profile. I'm surprised uh, that it stalls as gently as it does. I'm going to cycle the gear twice just to make sure that I am having the nose wheel out. Nice and gentle. Get up nice and high. There we go. A little bit of stick smashing to the top left. Just to show you guys this jet is capable. Hope I didn't throw you off there, dear. I think she's used to my shenanigans by this point, yeah? Yep. Gear down. Another quick double cycle on the gear. So happy those birds kind of quiet it down. Going vertical. Doubling over. Super sweet flyer. You can make it do knife edge circles and stuff too if you wanted to. Like you can just hold the rudder input. This is probably gonna get out of focus, isn't it? Mm, a little bit. Yeah. You can get it to stay in knife edge a little bit when you're trying to turn like that, but because you start exceeding the angle, the critical angle of attack, it starts to get a little mushy. So it's it's a bit weird to fly like that. Uh, you know what I haven't done actually? We've already done some touch and goes. Let's show you guys some inverted performance. Upside down, right next to the ground. Pushing over vertically. Turn it around to us, getting nice and low, super fast. Gear down, flat. Dropping the gear again. This plane is only 399 bucks, so it's, it's not exactly cheap, but it's not terribly expensive either. For what you get, it's a really good price. Gear up, flaps up. Love it when you can uh, remember to pull the gear up right as you rotate. I want to get a little faster at it so it looks even better. Nine minutes. Gear down, flaps full. Bring it in, keep that nose turned into the turn so we can coordinate. See how it slows down with those full flaps? Perfecto. Forgot to pull the gear up as quickly, that's okay. 81 losses, 91%, 22.38 Let's do another quick Invert it pass, maybe a little more stabilized this time. Man, it's getting hot out here. I'm kind of regretting that I wore pants today. It's the middle of February. You think it'd be a little colder here in North Carolina. There we go. A little turbulent in some spots, so it's kind of hard to make it look super smooth, and I'm also slightly overcorrecting because of the center of gravity. Do one more touch and go, we'll bring it in. It's nice to see this thing being flown on a day that isn't completely gray and overcast, even if there are some focusing issues. Uh, it's It's been rough lately, it's been so much rain. I gotta take whatever time I can get to go out and fly when I can get it. So even on a day like this when it's burning hot. Keep the nose pushed down. There we go, remember to pull the gear that time. All right, let's bring her in. And the right time on that one too, because the plane is, the transmitter is definitely complaining. So let's see if we can make this the best landing yet and get a nice smooth buttery approach. There we go, lining up with the runway, keeping that turn coordinated.
keeping that nose pulled up for a wheelie just a little bit. Now we gotta wait for a bit for it to slow down, so I'm gonna pull the stick back to try to help with that, but it's still gonna do its what it do. All right, we can turn it, here we go. All right, so I'll give you guys my thoughts on it right now while it's taxiing over. It looks awesome if you like futuristic looking planes. My wife suggested calling, adding the words M-A to the end of it, or the letters M-A to the end to call it Futurama. Maybe we can repaint this jet in a Planet Express paint scheme. That would be pretty cool, I think. Um, I love the love the overall styling on it. It looks very futuristic. It honestly looks like a like a jet from Ace Combat 3 with the uh, the fully enclosed cockpit with the neural interface that the pilots fly basically just using their brain, not even using their hands or anything. So it's got that kind of closed cockpit with like a virtual reality going on, which looks really cool. I love that style. Overall, it's a pretty solid performer. Even took the hit on the gear door pretty good. Uh, if you zoom in on the side here, you'll be able to see it. It's a little scraped up there, but nothing that a, a white bit of electrical tape couldn't fix. Honestly, it doesn't even need to be replaced. Uh, I haven't replaced any of the servos. I am flying with 150% rates, which is par for the course here at this channel. Um, you guys have seen what this jet is capable of if you wanna fly it with 150% rates. Even at 100% rates, I can't imagine it wouldn't fly very good. It looks great, handles pretty good. It does have that issue with the, the gear door uh, catching on the nose wheel, so be aware of that. That's gonna knock a full point off for me. So we went from probably like a nine out of 10, maybe not a full point, I'd say eight and a half. Just be aware of that. Throw the gear switch a couple of times to make sure that the gear door does not get caught on the strut. Because while you saw that it can, it can uh, take the hit, it didn't even hit the nose, surprisingly. Like that's completely clean so the uh, the gear strut here took all the impact and unlike the viper 90 millimeter uh, it didn't break the the hinge mechanism so it still works just fine so eight and a half out of ten uh, knowing that is an issue other than that i mean it's beautiful i love it i think you guys should consider getting one unfortunately as of now i believe they are out of stock but they will come back in stock soon and we do have a link in the description for it so let's cut on to the b-roll and we'll show you guys what else this thing can do if you've been following two brothers radio control for a while you know that our big shtick is high alpha it's one of my favorite maneuvers. Making jets perform high alpha when the design should otherwise prevent it is a big passion of mine. I've accomplished this in the past with the Viper 90mm from eFlight and it took some testing to figure out whether the Futura could do it at all. I saw that it would wing rock but otherwise perform the maneuver on a heavier pack, so that led me to think that if I reduce the wing loading even more and run a 3600 pack instead of a 44, I bet it could high alpha. And you know what? It totally can. After practicing entering high alpha and staying in the maneuver, up in the air, I started getting more comfortable with it and bringing it lower to the ground. But it was still wing rocking strongly. Then I realized that I just had to peg the elevator stick and go with half to 75% throttle to keep the nose pointed up. Then the magic happened. It stabilized and I could bring it as low as I want it to. So we managed to get 106 miles per hour as a top speed, which is fine, but 18.6 miles per hour on the low end. That's 30 kilometers per hour for you guys who don't use freedom units. I managed to get the jet to fly slower than it lands. That is the exploration of radio controlled flight that interests me the most. Not pegging the throttle and hauling around full speed, but finding out just how slow I can get a jet to fly without stalling it. Let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you on Wednesday, February 22nd, with a Eurofighter version 3 from Freewing.